Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. As always, you guys didn't have to click on this video, but you did, and I always appreciate that. That is awesome. All right, so we're doing something a little bit different. We're out at the workbench in my garage. You'll have to forgive all of the ambient noise. I got cicadas going, I got cars driving by, I got some guys cross street doing some roofing work. So I'm sorry about that, but this is about the only place that I can do this video and you'll see why here in just a second. Now, you guys already know what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the uh, Type 56 SKS, uh, but what I wanted to do is kind of do a bit of a deep dive into some historical pieces. So maybe about once a month, I'm going to do a video for you guys where I talk about the history and the nuances behind a piece that is either my age or older. <laughs> so um, at least earlier than 1970 maybe, I guess, I don't know. But we'll, uh, we'll just explore it and see how it goes. And if you guys have any requests, by all means, drop those down in the comment section down below. Now, we're talking about SKS rifles. Uh, these rifles are something that I've been trying to get my hands on for about 20 years. Every single time I have an opportunity to go ahead and buy one, I just don't have the money to do it. But Two weeks ago, I did have the money. Classic Firearms had a new batch of SKSs, and I went ahead and jumped on it and picked one up. Now, I did get one of their hand-selected and milled triggers, so that is going to add about uh, $45, $50 to the price of the SKS. This one ended up being right around $400 is what I paid for, it, and I picked it up from my FFL yesterday, last night actually. So uh, he stayed up burning the candle at both ends, and I sure do appreciate Jim over at um, Flying Monkey Gunworks, man. Thanks so much for uh, allowing me to swing by so late last night. That was really, really cool. Okay, so let's get into the history of the SKS. We're going to talk about uh, some of the um, interesting pieces and its development and then uh, some little nuances about it, all right? So let's get into it. The SKS was developed in 1944 by Sergei Gavrilovich Samenov. You guys will have to forgive me, my Russian is not very good. I don't pronounce 15 consonants in a row very well, so <laughs> I will do my best. But uh, essentially, the SKS is a short stroke gas piston operated tilting bolt semi-automatic rifle chambered in 7.62 by 39. Its complete designation, and <laughs> bear with me here, but <laughs> it's the Samo Zari Adani Karabin Sistemi Simonova 1945 or SKS 45. In English, that translates to self-loading carbine of the Simonov system 1945. The SKS was manufactured at the Tula Arsenal from 1945 to 1958. While there were other arsenals that did build the SKS, the Tula Arsenal was the one that manufactured the most for the longest period of time. Even though the SKS was built into the late 1950s, the AK-47 replaced the SKS in the early 1950s as the new frontline service rifle. However, the SKS stayed with support troops or second line service for decades. The Russians were looking to find a more compact semi-automatic rifle to replace the aging, long, slow-loading bolt-action Mosin Nagant or M1891. In addition, the new 7.62x39 cartridge was a more manageable round to mitigate recoil than the heavy 7.62x54R. Essentially, the SKS was a gap-filling rifle to be a viable fallback option should the radical design of the AK-47 fail. Variations of the SKS-45 are the Chinese Type 56, Yugoslavian PAP 59, Romanian SKS or M56, the Albanian Model 561 or July 10 rifle, East German Carabiner, S, if I could even pronounce that one right, the North Vietnamese Type 1, and the North Korean Type 63. Here's a little fun fact and an interesting side note. Much like the M1 Garand, the SKS is still used as a ceremonial rifle today. So that's pretty cool. All right, so 
there you have it. Uh, let's go ahead and get a closer look at what we've got going on here and uh, kind of start breaking down the rifle and getting it into its solvent bath to get all of that cosmoline off of it. Now, just so you guys know, the extra or the excess cosmoline, I will be keeping uh, a batch of it to use as hair gel, much like Brandon Herrera or the AK guy. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Heading down to the bench. Here we go, guys, man. This is going to be a really treat for me. So I've already taken a look at it. I took some pictures on Instagram so you guys can see that. So I have opened this up, but this thing is nasty. This thing has got tons of cosmoline on it. And we're going to do uh, a disassembly and get this thing completely cleaned up. Now, in order for you guys to do that, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. I've got this, this tub here that I'm going to go ahead and soak a lot of the stuff overnight so you guys can um, see the process there. I'm not, like I said, going to go into a really deep dive into cleaning all of this cosmoline off. Such did a really great video on that, but I do want to at least kind of show you a bit, a little bit of the process so you understand what you're getting into if you pick up a Milserp weapon like this or other ones. So essentially what you're gonna need is some uh, mineral spirits. Uh, I went ahead and got a uh, bottle uh, to be able to spray all of that stuff off with. You could also use Simple Green as well. I've got a big jug of this that I'm going to mix up with some water and put it into the tub so the interior pieces like the bolt and trigger group and stuff like that can soak overnight and just really uh, you know, pull that cosmoline out of all the nooks and crannies. Definitely going to need some rags and you're going to need some type of brush. Now, you don't necessarily need it, but I would recommend getting some type of vinyl uh, latex or some type of gloves because this stuff is going to be nasty. It's going to get all over the place and uh, yeah, not going to be a lot of fun for a lot of people. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get this tub out of the way. Let's start working on breaking down this rifle and go from there. I've never done this before, so this is probably going to be kind of a crap show, but we'll try it anyway. All right, so we made it out to Tallgrass Shooting Sports to get some rounds put through this, and uh, I've had a lot of fun with this. Uh, it's pretty smooth shooting. As it heats up, I can see that uh, some more cosmoline is bleeding out of the stock and the gas tube uh, wood that's up here. But other than that, it, it's, it's running flawlessly, and uh, I, I'm really having a lot of fun with this. So um, yeah, the SKS from classic firearms if you guys get a chance definitely look into picking one of these up these are fairly inexpensive and they're a lot of fun to shoot not to mention they're a great 
um, piece of history that you can pick up as well. So definitely check that out and we will catch you guys next time. Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. Uh, Patreon crew, you guys continue to crush it. Thank you so much. And we will catch you next time. As always, freedom through strength. Catch you later. Bye, y'all.